Hello dear YouTube family and welcome back to Liftoff. As usual, we always keep you updated with the latest news and everything related to the space niche world. In today's episode, we will talk about SpaceX testing the new Starship heat shields, why heat shields are so vital and what issues SpaceX fixed in the tiles to finally test them. Let's find out. If you are new here, we warmly welcome you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that we can keep you updated with everything space and everything SpaceX. Let's not waste a second and move on with the video. Known as Starship 20 or SN20, the 50 meter 165 foot tall steel rocket prototype has been deployed at one of SpaceX's two suborbital testing pads since 13th August. However, no tests have been conducted and a small army of SpaceX technicians and engineers have spent the past three or so weeks effectively turning a collection of steel tanks, tubes and parts into a functional rocket. Currently, SpaceX is focusing on building and deploying the Starship prototype, a ship capable of transporting people and cargo to the Moon and Mars in the future. The closest goal that SpaceX is aiming for is to be able to successfully perform the first orbital flight. That's why SpaceX needs to be concerned about the safe return of the Starship from Earth's orbit. And one of the very important solutions that SpaceX is more interested in today is the heat shields on the hull. On Monday 27th of September, and after weeks upon weeks of waiting and preparations, the Starship SN20 prototype was at last ready for the cryogenic pressure-proof testing. But unexpectedly, during the cryo-proof testing, some of the heat shield tiles fell off the nose cone area of Ship 20. Most probably, this wasn't a surprise for SpaceX, but for enthusiasts and the public, it certainly was. For those who are unfamiliar with the heat shield tiles due to being here for the first time, heat tiles are designed to protect the rocket during atmospheric entry. The ship will enter Mars' atmosphere at speeds of around 16,777 miles per hour. It will slow itself down using a belly flop maneuver similar to a skydiver. They will have to withstand some very high temperatures. The air hitting the space shuttle during re-entry reached around 3000 degrees Fahrenheit as it compressed against the surface. Perseverance, NASA's Mars latest rover, reached similarly toasty temperatures of around 2400 degrees when it entered the planet's atmosphere in February. SpaceX chose stainless steel for the Starship to better protect against those high temperatures. In a January 2019 interview with Popular Mechanics, Musk explained that aluminium and carbon fiber operate in a steady state of up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Stainless steel, on the other hand, can reach up to 1,600 degrees. That's an improvement, but it means that the steel will need some help to endure a landing. These black hexagons, Musk explained previously, are attached to the stainless steel exterior with studs. The tiles are hexagonal to ensure that there are no straight paths for hot gases to accelerate. It took a great amount of time for SpaceX to complete the installation of the thermal protection system tiles on Starship 20. The cause of this delay was the specific shape of some tiles that had to be separately designed and produced. Now it seems SpaceX has lost those nose cone tiles again in this test. SpaceX has installed 500 to 1000 plus tiles on flow Starship prototypes like the SN15, but the company has never come close to the 15,000 needed to cover the entire windward side of the world's largest rocket upper stage. SpaceX has embarked on that process for the first time in August and has seen a surprising number of successes and failures. At some point along the way, a significant fraction of the ceramic dinner plate sized tiles SpaceX technicians chipped, broke, shattered or ran into other fitment issues. Over the past month or so, much progress has been made in fixing those problem tiles and SpaceX has even done a more or less complete tile installation on the angular aero covers that protect the Starship's flap mechanism. Dozens of custom tiles with complex shapes require and curve. Starship 20 went through the pneumatic ambient test before the cryo-proof test on Monday. In a pneumatic test, gaseous nitrogen is filled in a spaceship for pressure testing and supercooled liquid nitrogen is used for cryogenic pressure proof testing. The cryo test ensures if a spaceship can withstand in-flight atmospheric pressures and extremely low temperatures. 
This is achieved by simulating the in-flight conditions by filling the Starship with liquid nitrogen that has a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. These tests, performed on Starship SN20 and the Super Heavy Booster 4 prototypes, are a preparation exercise aimed at the first Starship orbital test aimed towards the end of this year. SpaceX aims to achieve flight readiness and approvals by November. Today, SpaceX Starship SN20 has completed the cryogenic proof test in the second phase of testing. SpaceX now has overcome this issue of the heat shields this time, and everything seems fine with the tiles. The tanks of Ship 20 were filled with cryogenic liquid nitrogen to near spaceflight pressure levels, and hydraulic rams simulated the Raptor engine thrust to complete the test. SN20 passed these tests with flying colors. After passing the proofing test, SpaceX will now reinstall Raptor engines on Starship SN20 for a static fire test in the next phase. SN15 was the last Starship prototype to go through the cryogenic pressure proof testing, followed by the static fire tests. But there was a two week gap between both tests, as some Raptor engines needed repair and replacement before getting fully ready for the static fire test and a successful flight and landing later on. The same amount of delay can happen with SN20 prototype as the Raptor engines go through an extensive evaluation process. Since SpaceX aims for an orbital flight test with Starship 20, the stakes are much higher compared to the SN15's 10 km high altitude test. Meanwhile, SpaceX is also busy with several other projects at Starbase, such as the new integration towers, the Starship Quick Disconnect Arm, and the chopsticks that will attempt to catch the Super Heavy rocket booster upon landing. SpaceX's engineering team is constantly working on the chopsticks, although Elon Musk has said there is no guarantee that these will catch Super Heavy, but the excitement in this whole gig is surely guaranteed, like many other SpaceX enthusiasts. The United States Federal Aviation Administration is asking for public input on the draft environmental review for the proposed SpaceX Starship slash Super Heavy program in Boca Chica, Texas. SpaceX CEO has also asked his followers and fans to support his company's mission that ultimately aims at making human life multiplanetary. The public review process for Starship and Super Heavy Draft, PEA, will be closed by the FAA on 18th of October 2021. Comments in Elon Musk's Twitter thread and elsewhere hint that SpaceX will easily get a go-ahead for the Starship Orbital Flight Test program. Now that we have come to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your opinion about it in the comment section down below. If you want to stay updated with the latest upcoming space videos, subscribe to Liftoff channel and hit the notifications button. Thank you so much for your support and I hope to see you again. Until next time.